as we, we, we promised, what is something that employers can start to implement to really protect themselves above and beyond the, the tradition of, you know, just making the meal and rest breaks available? Uh, we had a really significant case last year, Donahue, uh, about meal and rest breaks, and it had a number of different issues. One, it answered the question, can you use rounding policies with respect to meal breaks? And the answer was no, 30 minutes has to be 30 minutes. You can't round to the nearest 30 minutes uh, for the meal breaks. Um, the court also said that if your time records show short um, missed or late meal periods, that creates a rebuttable presumption of a violation. And so it shifts the burden to the employer to prove that a meal period was provided, you know, and um, thankfully the court provided one way that employers can do that. And it is a meal and rest break attestation. Uh, the example here, the employer had a timekeeping system that the, at the end of every day would give a pop-up to the employees who had missed short or late meal periods and ask them, you know, were you provided your meal period? So they could, the employee could affirm either that I was provided the 30 minute break and I chose not to take it, um, or I, I chose to take it short or late, or I was not provided an opportunity to take a 30 minute break. And so when the, the employee answered either of the first instances, and, and again, you only, your obligation is only to provide it, then the employer would not pay out a premium. If the employee answered the third answer was I wasn't provided it, then the employer would pay out the premium because that would be a violation. And so to the extent that you can implement these daily attestations, asking about meal breaks, asking about rest breaks, asking about off clock work, those can kind of provide you evidence to support a defense if an employee later claims, oh, I was not provided my meal or rest breaks or I was forced to work off the clock. You can then point to these attestations as, as evidence that in fact they were. Um, and the court has said that that could overcome the presumption. The court hasn't answered the question as to whether you can do that on a weekly or paycheck basis. Um, you know, a lot of employers will have, you know, when your employee signs or receives their paycheck, they'll sign something saying, I got all my meal periods and rest periods and I, my time is correct. The court didn't answer whether that has the same effect, but it kind of suggested perhaps it doesn't because the, it's the employer's duty to, to maintain accurate time records. It's not the employee's duty to remember whether they got all of their meal and rest breaks for the week. So. We do recommend daily if possible, but you know, weekly or paycheck attestations provide at least some support above doing nothing. Um, to the extent you can implement that in an electronic form, that we think is a best practice, but paper is fine if you can manage storing that information. Keep in mind that you know, a meal and rest break litigation could cover a four year period. So, you know, you want to keep those records for a sufficient amount of time. Um, and then if you're doing the attestations, it's not enough to simply set it and forget it. You do want to have a system that allows you to see if somebody says, no, I was not provided a meal and rest break so that you can follow up with that situation to pay a premium and or to determine what needs to be fixed so that there's no problems going forward. Because I think the worst of both worlds is to have the system in place and have the employees complaining that they're not getting their meal and rest breaks and you're not doing anything about it. 